What's happening, everybody? We welcome you back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. We are joined, as always, to kick off our football week by Raymond Brown from San Diego Football Network. Raymond covers everything from high school to college and the pros here in San Diego, all the teams that you need to know about. But we're joining him to talk about high school specifically because he's always out and about doing some of the best video work in San Diego if you're looking for good highlights, up-to-date speed, uh, shot well, well-framed always, actually, which is harder than you would think it is with high school football. Uh Raymond, thank you so much for joining us. You caught a pair of games this week. You were at Lincoln Modern Day, and then you were at Grossmont Mount Miguel. So you have seen some of the best again, as always, this week. I'm curious, just walk us through what you saw from both of those games, and uh, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate being here. Um, yeah, man, I got to watch two of the – probably two of the best teams in the county, man. Both teams are on a roll right now, undefeated, explosive offense – um, starting with Lincoln, um, at the beginning of that game, it was pretty competitive. Um, modern day, they put up a good fight, uh, made some big plays. Uh, they were up like 13 to 6, 13 to 7 in the second quarter. But Lincoln, um, they're just unstoppable, especially on offense, man. Achilles Smith had like three touchdowns, three different receivers. Um, Cartel Purtis, um, he hit a, um, he hit uh, Isaiah Buxton with like a 70-yard bomb to go up. Lincoln just answered back with a bomb to Makai Gray. Uh, that, that team is just stacks, man. Uh, I don't know what else to say. It just got so much talent, so much depth. Uh, it's crazy. And uh, that's why I have them number one in my polls. I mean, it's easy to have the defending champs be number one until they show you, honestly, anything different. So I don't see why you don't. Stick with it. You're absolutely right. Then Mount Miguel, obviously we talked about them last week on the show, seeing if they've kind of like already been crowned the de facto D4 champions. And again, they did not disappoint with another massive lopsided, but both sides executed well type of, or I guess all three special teams have not let them down either. So what'd you see out of Mount Miguel? Uh, just explosion, man. Um, they had a bit of a slow start too. Uh, hats off to Grossmont. They fought as much as they can. Um, they had a couple key players injured, but uh, they still hung in there. But Mel Miguel is just too much. Like just, just like Lincoln, they just flooded with depth, man. So many receiving options for Matt Burton, um, Jemiah uh, Castillos. He's just an all-around great player on both sides of the ball. Uh, they have a freshman phenom, Delonte Williams. He was making plays, a pick six, and a, a receiving touchdown. And um, one player that don't get talked about enough is uh, Davion McGowan uh, in a run game. He had three rushing touchdowns. Just a uh, great play all around, man. Broke a school record for points. Uh, they gave up the most points they did all season with 20, but that just uh, shows Grossmont's fight. A uh, great, great all around, well-balanced game. And um, it's, it's only going to get tougher. They got two D2 teams coming up. I think neither one of them has won a game this year. So they're going to come in hungry. But um, I think Mount Miguel is going to continue to roll, man. I don't see them losing the game this year. It certainly seems like if they are going to lose, it would be considered the, the, an upset, at least. Uh, you can say consistently about this Mount Miguel team is that they are the favorite team. For each one of their oh, yeah. games. I kind of saw this one as the first week or weekend of like a lot of noticeable blowouts. It started on Thursday with Chula Vista beating Canyon Hills, putting up a 50 burger Lincoln. Like you said, I got to see Kearney execute well, remain undefeated and beat Maranatha Christian. That Kearney team looks pretty good for their division race. Mission Bay won pretty big against Sweetwater. Patrick Henry won big against West Hills. And then continuing into the Friday games, you, I mean, you go up and down here. And I consider anything three scores or more in football to be like the start of a blowout. And Monta Vista over San Ysidro qualifies for that. Um, Bonita Vista over Hilltop was a big one. Country Day over Coronado was a big one. Uh, Helix versus Madison Helix. I got to see that one. They look like they are executing extremely well. Central was like, you go down the list and there was a lot of lopsided games this week. So I'm going to be curious to see if this was the anomaly week and there was just kind of some teams catching teams at the wrong sign, wrong times, or if this was the divider week and we're starting to really see like, oh, those are some dogs. And all right, you know, they're a football team. They're good. But like, we're starting to see that separation a little bit. Absolutely, man. The most the most shocking one to me was uh, Steel Canyon blowing out El Capitan. Um, 
I thought El Capitan was one of those uh, teams that are probably too too low, ranked too low in the division. Probably should move up a couple of divisions. But um, wow, I was shocked from what I seen with Steel Cannon. Man, he ran the ball pretty well. Um, Nico Jaro, he's probably one of the best athletes. He had uh two punt returns or two kickoff returns, something crazy like that. And um, Jonathan Sablon ran the ball great behind that um, monstrous offensive line. I was very impressed from what I seen with Steel Cannons. When I see them in person, they did not look like a team that I thought could be the team like El Cap, especially El Cap coming off such a thrilling victory over La Jolla. I didn't see them slipping. So um, hats off to Steel Cannon, man. Um, I was wrong about them. I was I wasn't familiar with their game. They didn't show me nothing, but they showed me something uh, this game. Anything else from this past week before we move on to talking about the games coming up this week? Uh, hats off to Patrick Henry, too. I was not expecting them to go on the blue turf and do what they did to West Hills. Um, yeah, man, I was <laughs> there's a lot of teams that I was wrong about. A lot of teams that I thought were going to struggle, and uh, they did good. Uh, hats off to Monta Vista. They're break, they broke their 13-game uh, losing streak uh, against a tough San Ysidro team. Man, uh, we we just we we don't know what we talk about, man. We <laughs> well, no, that's what I'm asking. Well, I think we'll see if this is the week of kind of oh, that win was weird, that win was weird, that win was weird. It was just that Patrick Henry got that one upset or something like that. Or this is the week where we start to see, hey, it took that team two weeks, but they figured out their offense finally. It took that team until this guy from transferring in uh finally got like this guy came off and like Sometimes in football, the sample sizes are just so small that I would caution you to stop on saying that outright you were wrong on teams because this is, to me, the starting of football being football and being weird. And it'll take us a couple more weeks to really figure it out. I'm always like week seven where I'm like, all right, now we kind of have the end game all figured out, and it's, it's it's wide open before that. So I will be very curious, but I'm not as quick as uh, as you are to apologize outright and say we were wrong on some of these teams. Hey, I reserve the right to be wrong, man. Football is an unpredictable game, man. You think it's the only you sport never know when it's your day. Round. Exactly. Every dog has his day, man. You might be rolling for five weeks, running to a team that's been struggling, and they they come at you. Like for me personally, I'd rather play against a 0 5 team than a 5 and 0 team. Because that 0 5 team, they're desperate to get that win and they're gonna come at you hard. So um, yeah, man, that's just it's just the game we love, man. It, it keeps us on our feet, keeps everything exciting. I love it. All right, let's move on to some games coming up this week. And remember, everybody, you can check out all of Raymond's stuff at San Diego Football Network. He has great lists coming out, top 23 and 23 for every week. Big games, big players, big plays. And like I said, well-shot highlights, which are always enjoyable across all of the platforms. Raymond, I'm looking at this Thursday slate and I see a couple of like three and one versus three and oh type games. And I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. That means we got great games coming up this week. The first one, though, that I'm curious about is Granite Hills and Central, because I think that Granite Hills now qualifies under the category of every game for theirs is a must a must watch because it has huge implications rippling out across the county as we're watching that open division race. Do you agree? And what are your thoughts on Central versus Granite Hills? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Granite Hills, uh, they are in their spot. Uh, they, they're currently an open division team, but we're just waiting to see what they do against Helix, who is also an open division team. Um, that game at El Centro, I mean, at Centro is going to be a, a tough one. Uh, like I, I tell everybody, man, at Imperial Valley, it's hard to go up there and get a win. Um, Central got a great team. Jared Martin, highly recruited defensive, uh, defensive end. Um, Arturo Estrada. Amazing on both sides of the ball, DB and wide receiver. Uh, they're going to make some plays, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't think they have the talent to beat uh, Granite Hills. Fair enough. The other game I wanted to talk about on the Thursday slate is La Jolla Country Day at Escondido Charter. Country Day, another one of those teams with a pretty nice looking three and one and four and one sounds a heck of a lot better than three and two. So I'm curious about your thoughts on the Tories. Um, the Tories are playing okay. Um, I like uh, Escadito Charter. I like uh, their running back. Uh, I believe his name is Patterson. He's been running the ball pretty well. Uh, if they could get him going, I think Escadito Charter got this. All right, so let's move on to Friday. And once again, everyone, you can check out all of Raymond's stuff at San Diego Football Network. Helix and Cathedral Catholic has to be amongst the biggest games of the week. Tell us what your thoughts are there. 
I mean, uh, yeah, that's going to be every time these two teams meet up, uh, something magic happens. So I, I expect it this year. Um, even uh, Cathedral has been off the radar a little bit because they've been losing to some tough um, out of section teams. But uh, Cathedral is still amongst that uh, top five, in my opinion. And um, if Helix don't watch out, uh, they could get caught slipping. Um, Jack Stevens is playing great. Uh, Ethan Ford, he's been running the ball very well. He's proven to be one of the best uh, running backs in the county. But um, Helix is playing like dogs too, man. Um, Jackson Daniels, awesome one-handed catch. Um, Kevin Allen III is probably having a season that could make him a player of the year contender, 132 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Jordan Gash is a great player on that defensive line. Uh I got Helix winning this one, but uh, Cathedral is going to put up a fight. I like the way they've uh, been playing this year. One more game that I've got from from the, the Friday slate for you is Del Norte at Poway. And Del Norte mm -hmm. has a new coach this year, but I think you can do a consistent, you can use the last couple of years as an overall trend scientifically to analyze. They have started strong and then they have faded down the line. I am watching every single one of these Del Norte games right now as curiously as I am with any other, if not more curiously than all the other schools, because I want to see if this can be a nine win Del Norte team. I don't know. Like, Poway is a really tough one, but you look at the schedule and it's kind of like if they can beat Poway, it might be, you know, getting downhill and easier from here. And Del Norte can really succeed there, be a number one seed type thing going to play. I have sky's the limit on that team, but they got to get by Poway first. Poway on the flip side, three and one. The tough loss was to Saints. And that's where I was kind of saying, are we going to see some aberrations, wins and losses, or is it an overall trend? And I think that maybe Poway's trying to put that Saints loss behind them as, hey, we just, we lost one. It happens. It's football. So I'm really interested in this one. Your thoughts on Del Norte Poway? It's gonna be a great game, man. Uh I was I was high on Del Norte. Um still am. You know, they let a couple of games get away from him. I think Tory Pines beat them. Some of the, that Tory Pines team is tough. Um, was it Tory Pines? No, they beat Tory Pines. I'm sorry. It was a uh, Lacoste Canyon they lost to, I believe. But um, this is gonna be a great game. Poway had a, a close win against uh, Ramona. Uh it's just it's it's a battle of two North County teams trying to prove that they're in that higher echelon. For, uh, um, in a stacked North County. So it's tough. I got Poway pulling this off. They're, I think they're the bigger, tougher team right now. Fair enough, Raymond. Thank you very much, as always, for joining us. I encourage everyone to go check out everything that Raymond is doing all week long, covering all levels of high school or all levels of football and all levels of high school football, but all the levels of football <laughs> in San Diego. He's absolutely one of the best that you guys need to go check out. Thank you, my man. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.